Good evening. How is everybody? Very well. It is great to be here with you. Thank you for allowing me uh, to be part of this uh, special occasion for a special cause. What a terrific reason to gather. What a wonderful reason to be in one room in one accord to help this wonderful organization, uh, Nintendo for Africa. When I shared with a friend who hadn't heard of this organization, he asked me to repeat the name of the organization, and I, I repeated it, and I said, Nintendo for Africa. He said, do you mean Nintendo for Africa? I said, I said no, they're not playing games. It's a serious organization. It's Nintendo for Africa. And he said, oh. Nintendo for Africa. I said, yes, you've got it now. Nintendo for Africa. B-I-N-T-E-N-D-O for Africa. And then he paused, shook his head, and said, how could an organization not even know how to spell its own name? <laughs> what my friend didn't know is that Nintendo is a Swahili word that means action. So this is an organization that has taken action. Action for immigrant children and families in our St. Louis region. This region is better off because Nintendo for Africa is here and taking action. I feel so right at home here. It's, it's quite noisy, just like my own home is. Uh, with kids running around. We have three kids and one on the way. I feel like really among my sisters and my brothers here. Even the name of this building makes me feel at home. This site is called the John F. Kennedy Community Center. It reminds me of when I immigrated to this country at the age of seven um, from Nigeria in 1983. When I landed, I landed at John F. Kennedy Airport in New York City. I feel right at home also because of what this organization does. When I was growing up as a kid, this is the kind of organization that would have sought to help my family and me. And I feel like I have much in common with your leader, but I'll get to Jeffrey Sorientet in just a minute. I first want to recognize your broader leadership. If it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village of board members to raise an organization like Nintendo for Africa. I want to lift up Dr. D'Andrea Weeks. <laughs> Alan Kagarama, Fungai Maparasi, Patty Vanadilok, Waboy Waranga, Christina Bibi, Jesse Kamadi, and Dr. John Wang. There's a Greek, Greek proverb that I love that describes what these leaders are doing. A society grows great when old men and women plant trees under whose shade they know they shall never sit in. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying y'all are old. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying at all. I didn't say that. What I'm saying is you're building something that will grow to become even bigger than what you could ever have imagined. And it will help even more immigrant children and families than you could ever have envisioned. I feel right at home also because I've known your leader, Jeffrey Suryatet, for some time now. As Jeffrey uh, mentioned, we met each other a couple years ago, and he and I actually have a lot in common. We're both sons of Africa. Jeffrey was born in Kenya, I was born in Nigeria. Jeffrey arrived in St. Louis in 2004, the same year that I came to St. Louis to begin law school at Washington University. Jeffrey and I both like to play golf, but um, that's where the similarities end, because you see, Jeffrey's not a very good golf player. <laughs> Jeffrey and I went golfing early in the spring, now let's just say some of his balls did not land where he had intended for them to land. But actually, Jeffrey and I do share that in common because I'm not very good myself. And that's actually why I like playing golf with Jeffrey because it makes me not feel so bad about my golf game. <laughs> 
But there is one additional important thing that Jeffrey and I share in common. And that is that we both understand very well that the future of our state, the future of this region, the future of our country lies in the hands of our youth. We very well understand that whenever our children are around, our state and our country's future leaders are also around. Will all the children in the audience please stand? All the children in the audience please stand. Please give them a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at the future leaders of our region, the future leaders of our state, and the future leaders of our country. Let me share with you a story that uh, can help illustrate this point. Now, this is a story that I heard a long time ago, so I don't remember all the details. So pardon me if I'm fuzzy on some of the details, but I'll do my best. It's a story about a little boy named Philip and a teacher named Mrs. Holden. Now, when you, when you first listen to the story, if you're not listening closely, you'll think the story is about this little boy named Philip. But when you listen deeply to the story, you'll see that it's really about this teacher, Mrs. Holder. There was a little boy who lived on the east coast of Florida with his family in a small town. And he went to this junior high school. This was a very good public junior high school, a seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. So this boy, Philip, had done, uh, had, was one of the kids who was uh, doing science research projects, participating in science fairs in this school. And he was doing very well academically, this teacher, Mrs. Holder, was one of the coordinators for this science research program. So all of the kids in the school who were engaged in this science research work went through Mrs. Holder. So she got to know Philip pretty well because he was doing this science research uh, program in the school. Now, let me fast forward the story. Uh, Philip was doing very, very well. He'd done seventh and eighth grade in the school. And I'm told that after eighth grade, Philip's family moves from that school in Florida and they move to another state. And so Philip actually begins ninth grade in another state. And he's in this school, the new school in another state. He's there for a couple of weeks. And he begins, and his parents begin to realize that he's being taught things in the ninth grade that he'd already learned in the seventh and eighth grade in the school in Florida. Now, I don't know what happened. I don't know who called who. I don't know, uh, I'm not told who called who, but somehow there was a conversation between Philip's parents and this teacher, Mrs. Holder, about what would it look like for Philip to go back to Florida and live with this teacher, Mrs. Holder, and her family to finish out this ninth grade year. Now, let me pause the story here. Let me set this up for you. Uh, Mrs. Holder and her husband, I'm told, were empty nesters. In other words, they had children, but all their children were out of the house. So it was just the two of them in this house. And they're considering taking this little boy back into their home. Now, how many of you here by show of hands have children? Please raise your hand. Okay, lots of hands. How many of you who have children are empty nesters? In other words, your children are gone, they're out of the house. Okay, a few hands. How many of you who have children want to be empty nesters? <laughs> Lots of hands. So that's how it was for Mrs. Holder and her husband. They were empty nesters. But somehow they agreed to take Philip into their home. So Philip leaves his family in this other state, goes back to Florida, and he goes and lives with his Holder family to finish his ninth grade year. Now here's what I'm told happens that ninth grade year. Philip, for the first time, plays organized sports. He plays basketball, he runs track, and he continues to do well and do his science research projects that he's been doing. Now here's what's cool about what happens in that ninth grade year. I'm told that Philip, in basketball, sets the record for most rebounds in a single game. In track, I'm told he's the fastest boy in ninth grade in the entire county in the one mile run. And here's what's really cool. 
Philip graduates as number one in that junior high school. He's valedictorian of that junior high school. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. Now here's what's really amazing about this story. I'm told that because Philip did so well in that academically rigorous junior high school, he's able to compete for, gain admission to, and graduate from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. It's pretty cool. But there's a twist on this story. That little boy wasn't Philip. That little boy was me. Wow. And I'll never forget what Mrs. Holder and her husband did for me in that ninth grade year. It absolutely changed the trajectory of the rest of my life forever. Absolutely forever. And you don't have to take a child into your home to make a difference. But when you support the youth through this organization, through Nintendo for Africa, what you do has ripple and resonance for a lifetime. It will affect their lives, can affect their children's lives, can affect their children's children's lives. When we help immigrant families and children, we help to build up the state, we help to build up this region. Consider this, as reported by Forbes in 2018 and published in the National Bureau of Economic Research Working Paper, immigrants found that 25% of all new U.S. businesses across the country. Immigrants also found patents at twice the rate of U.S.-born citizens. Uh, the Mosaic Project cites that four and more people in the St. Louis region are 29% more likely than native-born folks to start a business. And get this, a St. Louis Post-Dispatch article just published just earlier this month cited new Census Bureau data citing St. Louis of the top 20 metro areas in the country, the third fastest metro area for foreign born. That's incredible. And this is part of a sustained multi-year trend that began in 2014. The people in St. Louis who are born in other countries are here, they're increasing their numbers, and we really are an important part of the societal, cultural, and economic fabric of this region. So if we want this region to thrive, we should and must support immigrant children and families. So let us support us by generously giving tonight and beyond to this organization, to Nintendo for Africa. As I close, uh, I quote not the Greeks this time, but I quote a Kenyan. Are there any Kenyans in the house tonight? A couple? Oh, Kenyans are in the house. And this is a quote, generosity has nothing to do with what you have. That is a quote by your very own Jeffrey Soriantep. And I would add, generosity has everything to do with the kind of world, the kind of nation, the kind of state, the kind of region that you want to see. So let's be very generous tonight and beyond and support the wonderful work of this organization. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't add this as I close. If you are a citizen of this country and you want to see change in this region, you want to see change in this country, you want to see change in this vote, register to vote now. If you are not a citizen, but you are otherwise eligible, I encourage you to begin the process to become a citizen so that you can vote when you become a citizen. I've observed that, I've observed that many times immigrant Americans do not engage 
in our process here. Some think that, well, this isn't our country. So we'll leave it to them, those who were born here, to deal with it. But our children are here. We are here. Many of us have our parents here. So we have multiple generations here that are affected by what happens in this region, affected by what happens in this state, affected by what happens in this nation. So no longer can we say we're going to leave it to them. It's up to us. So if we can vote, let us vote. Finally, remember that Greek proverb I talked about in the beginning? Well, let us help the tree that is the tender for Africa. Let us help it bloom, let us help it grow, let us help it blossom so that its shade will cool and cover all of our children. Thank you so much for allowing me to share in this event. Thank you so much for your attention.